Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 36 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about one of the very important applications of DNA sequencing and that is DNA fingerprinting. So let us see what it is. It is a technique to compare the DNA sequences of two individuals. Now let us suppose there are two, I mean it, it has got very important uses. I'll tell you how. Let us suppose there is a crime or there is a theft which has happened in somebody's place. Now uh, you would have seen that what happens is when uni investigation happens, people tries to see that okay, uh, if what, what are, where are the fingerprints? of the criminal so looking at the fingerprints of, of the criminal criminal not the criminal the fingerprints present on the various objects in the house so finding out the uh, fingerprints of that and then comparing it with all the individuals who are who can be a suspect and then they can find out who was the real criminal so it is actually a technique where we can compare the dna sequence of two individuals so if the we can see that if the DNA sequence of the two individuals match or not. Now, obviously, if they are two different individuals, their DNA sequences will not match. So, why it is called fingerprinting? Because the way two individuals cannot have the same fingerprint. Similarly, the chances that two individuals will have exactly same DNA sequence, that is also very, very rare. Except for the scenario of identical twins. So, even for case of fingerprint also, uh, except for very rare cases, no two individuals will have the same fingerprint. And because of this, it is known as DNA fingerprinting. It was developed by a scientist called Alec Jeffries, who used to work in the Leicester University of London. So there this technique was discovered for the first time. But then it, it, come, it turned out to be so much useful that uh, it gradually spread throughout the world. Now this is useful in finding a disease causing agent, in finding criminals, in finding relationships between people. For example, sometimes it happens that a couple claims that the baby which they have is not theirs so somebody else have exchanged their babies so sometimes it happens these kind of cases so in in order to check if that baby belongs to them or not dna fingerprinting can help so it can actually compare the dna sequence of the child with that of the parents and it can be proved whether the child belonged to the parents or not so let us look at the basis of DNA fingerprinting. On what basis the concept of DNA fingerprinting works. <clears throat> now the sequences which do not code for proteins, they form the basis of DNA fingerprinting. Now as we have already discussed that not all the sequences on a DNA code for proteins. There are a major majority portion of it do not code for proteins you you have seen it yourself that less than two percent of the genome actually codes for proteins so these non-coding regions help in regulating the gene expression as we saw previously right so these non-coding regions again forms the basis of DNA fingerprinting. Now, as we discussed that almost 99.9% .9 of DNA is same in DNA sequences, in same in all the human beings. So the coding regions are always the same, but the non-coding regions have differences. So let us take an example. Let us suppose this is the DNA and this is the coding region of DNA. So this is the coding region of DNA and this is the non-coding region. Similarly, again, this is the coding region and again, this is the non-coding region and so on. So it has been observed then that when we say that the DNA sequence is 99.9% similar, it says that the coding region will all be similar. However, they can have different alleles. For example, one might have uh, brown hair, the other might have blue hair. So brown and blue are just two different alleles of the same gene hair color. Right. So that means they can have different alleles, but otherwise the coding regions will remain the same. So all the differences that arise is due to the non-coding regions. And due to differences in the non-coding region, we are able to differentiate between the DNA fingerprinting of two different individuals. So it is the non-coding regions which form the basis of DNA fingerprinting. So 
let us take examples of all the individuals. You see, different person look different. So their phenotypes are different. The way they look is different. So why do they have these different looks? Because there are certain differences in their non-coding regions. Because coding region is the same for all of them. That is why they all have hair. They all have two eyes. They all have one nose. So all those basic things are similar. But due to the differences in the non-coding regions, their DNA sequences will be different. And since DNA sequences are different, that is why the concept of DNA fingerprinting works. So what exactly happens in the non-coding region? In the non-coding region are present the repetitive sequence. That means the small segments which keep on repeating itself over a couple of times. And they can be repeated as many as say 50 times or so. So how are they? So in this non-coding regions are present the repetitive sequences. So repetitive sequences, how will they look? They will look somewhat like this. For example, A, G, T, A, G, A, G, T, A, A, G, T, A, A, G, T, A. So basically what is happening? This sequence is getting repeated over and again. So in the non-coding region, you have these kind of repeats. And these are known as tandem repeats. So based on this tandem repeats, there is another term called VNTR, that is variable number tandem repeats. That means these kind of repeats, these kind of segments which get repeated for variable number of times. So all the mutations which take place, they occur in these non-coding regions. Now the way we have VNTR, similarly we also have STR, they are called short tandem repeats. So this is variable number tandem repeats, variable number tandem repeats and this is short tandem repeats. Now how is short tandem repeats different than variable number repeats? So short tandem repeats, they are shorter than VNTR and also they can survive better over time. So that is why STRs are used these days for doing DNA fingerprinting. So we will see how exactly it is used and how the process of DNA fingerprinting take place. So for now you just understand that the differences which you see between the DNA sequences of individual is because of the non-coding regions and what is present in the non-coding regions it has repetitive sequences which which has given a term called VNTR or STR. So due to this repetition so it, it, it contains all these repetitive sequences but these sequences a change in these sequences can give rise to mutations which can even later give rise to evolution. Now based on this let us quickly see how the non-coding region differs in different individuals. So here I have taken an example of a son, his father and a stranger. Now we say that uh, the concept of DNA fingerprinting will be able to establish relationship. So this concept should be able to tell that this boy is his son. So there is a relationship between these two, between the son and the father, but there is no relationship with the stranger. So let us see how the non-coding regions of three of these differ. So is there any similarity in the non-coding region of the son and father? So how is it like? Let us have a look at that. So this is how the DNA will look like and the blue regions are the coding regions. Now as you can see in all of them the coding region is the same. As I said there is no difference in the coding region. Now all the difference will be there in the non-coding region. Now let us suppose for the sun, I am just giving you a rough example. So let us suppose for the sun this is how it looks like. So this is how the genes are present in the non-coding region. Similarly here let us suppose this is how it is present. This is the case of father. So let us say that the father has this. And again, the father has somewhat like this. Now, if you talk about the stranger, maybe the stranger has genes somewhat like this. And again here, if you see, this is how he has the genes. So now if you see that the way the non-coding region is organized in case of the son and the father, they look quite similar when compared to that of the stranger. So if you look at the pattern of the arrangement in the non-coding region, you can guess whether the two 
individuals are related to each other however they will not have it identical so even if you see the father and son duo they have this part exactly identical but then this part there are some differences but when you compare any of them with the stranger they are completely different so there can be no relation as such now sometimes if you are distant relatives maybe your second or third cousin so in that case you are not stranger completely but at the same time you are not very closely related also so in such cases uh, you cannot determine it for sure that how closely you are related but yes at least for paternal or maternal relationship which are like close relationships you can definitely look at the dna fingerprinting and you can establish the relation relationship between individuals so this is how so now you understand what forms the basis of DNA fingerprinting. So now the, when the process of DNA fingerprinting works, it will actually focus on this non-coding region and it, it will actually try to see how exactly the genes are distributed in the non-coding region. And looking at that distribution, it can predict relationships, it can uh, identify a criminal. So it, it does all its stuff based on that. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.